Alright, hello and welcome to a new project that I'm trying out. The Relicus Podcast. It's me and Buttkiss. We're just going to kind of sit down and talk a little bit for a while in an unprofessional way. And unprofessional? Dude, we're so professional. We even came prepared. Yeah, well, I didn't spring this on him in, in like the last moment. I didn't or spring myself on this last moment. Um, but we we're doing this just kind of sit down we chat for a bit and yeah it's uh it's kind of a a less professional waiting queue podcast so go watch the waiting queue podcast <laughs> i wasn't aware it was possible to get less professional oh, it over is. there it oh. is always always you know, anything with relic just goes downhill fast well you teach me I, I'm going to. I will teach you the ways of a relic. <laughs> but anyway, so, we don't really have any, like, great topics or anything in gaming news or whatever. Um, usually the Waiting Cube podcast, they pull, you know, topics from what's uh, going on in the days. Or they talk about themselves, which we're going to be more, fo- more focusing towards that second part of just talking about ourselves. But what I would like to talk about right now with few butkus is uh green light steam green light personally Ooh. i'm gonna i'm gonna keep going but personally um i think it was a great idea to start it up i think it was a great idea to start this and it brought a lot of games to steam 703 to be exact uh a green a green light games have been added to steam and that's not counting all of the other games that the publisher was then able to put on Steam. So, I think it's a great idea. And we've talked about Greenlight before. So, on the waiting queue, not with you, but with Cross and Companion. So, I want you to weigh in on it. What do you think about the Greenlight? I have always liked the idea of Greenlight. Mostly for the reasons you've already mentioned. It's, uh, it adds games, open stores for publishers who would otherwise be unable to ever get on a gaming distributor like Steam and uh and uh well what what can I say? I don't know anything. <laughs> you keep talking. <laughs> um Please. well you completely, you know, just act like you're gonna keep talking. Um there is there are a few problems with Green Light and I think we've run through it before on the waiting queue podcast, but we'll run through again with, you you know, I'll run through with you. Um, obviously Valve is not moderating Greenlight at all. You see a lot of joke titles appear on Greenlight, stuff that should just not even be there. Simulator, simulator. Yeah. Yeah, Like, and that, that devalues Greenlight, that, that, I mean, you, like, all of the trash that gets put on Greenlight actually devalues the project. It makes it look worse. It makes Steam look worse by, you know, affiliation. And it makes it harder to find the games that are actually real games. So it's not it's not healthy, and Valve really should have a moderating system other than just the, you have to pay $100 to post on Greenlight. Would you agree with that statement? I would agree with that. I would definitely pay hundred dollars to put a joke game up on Steam Light. Yeah, it's like Valve needs to have the games be reviewed by actual human beings, and then like you know forwarded to Greenlight rather than just. Oh, you've paid a hundred dollars now. You can put as many games as you want onto Greenlight. And I've seen the same ones sometimes pop up three or four different times. It's like. Why is this allowed? So it's quite dumb and broken. The other problem I have with green light, because Buckus isn't gonna talk very much. He's not a very big talker. <laughs> this is true. Even when I'm tired and ramble, they talk more. Um, the other problem I have with green light is that right now there are four thousand two hundred and nine titles that are green lit. They are not released on Steam. They're just green lit. So, what that tells me is that either the games aren't finished, and they were put up there to gauge interest in them, 
which is fine, or Valve doesn't send the notifications whenever you've been greenlit, which is not fine. But I've noticed in a lot of the uh, a lot of the greenlight games whenever I look through when I'm voting, um, a lot of times it's a game that isn't done yet. It's a game that's clearly not done yet. It's uh, it, you know it could it could be wanting to come into early access or it could be wanting to do like it could have a Kickstarter. And I really feel that Greenlight should kind of limit that in a way. Because, again, this is a battle of moderation. That's never going to happen. But it's not really fair to the consumer to vote on something that isn't done. I understand gauging interest, and maybe Valve can pursue uh, something later down the road to allow developers to kind of throw ideas into you know, a forum and let people say yes or no to that. But Valve's probably not going to do that. That's not really Valve's thing. But having green light be here, green light is for, in my opinion, it should be for either finished games or games that are close to being finished. Not games that have a Kickstarter that's just started. Not games that are, you know, just basic idea. Because that's not helping anyone. That's yeah. That would that would cut down on a lot of the problems. Like it's not helping the consumer at all, um, since the consumer would then be like, "Well, I voted for this and I wanted it to play it, but it's not ever coming out." And that's evident with the four thousand two hundred and nine games that are currently greenlit that are not on Steam. So that is a pretty pretty rough uh, ratio yeah yeah like out of if you, if you did the math 4000 uh, it's 4912 4912 games have been voted on by the steam community out of that 4209 of them are not on steam yet only 703 have been released that's a horrible, horrible ratio. And this is due, in my opinion, to games that aren't finished, that weren't even actually started, that were just the ideas and um, been getting voted up, as well as games that have Kickstarters, and they're, you know, developing now. They might be in development right now, because of that, uh, Valve giving more attention to them through green, green light, which let them get their Kickstarter done, but we're kind of screwed here, not getting those games. So, okay, so you caught that last part? Uh, yes. Something about cutting this part out. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I meant the green light thing. Um. But what what it comes down to is the Valve needs to just moderate Greenlight a little bit, and it could actually be something that's because it, it was, it's already an idea that people like. But if it was moderated, it'd be an idea that would be much much better. I agree. It's uh, and and like you said, it really doesn't take uh, it really wouldn't take too much moderation or manpower or anything like that. Yeah, you just need to have a physical person look at a game and be like, oh, this is a Kickstarter. Well, this isn't the appropriate forum for that. Exactly. And if Valve wanted to later pursue a forum like that, they could. And it it, it would be in the community section, and it could be something like Greenlight. And I think the community would be appreciative to, towards that, towards being notified. Because Steam is, Steam is a juggernaut. Steam is our center for gaming for a lot of PC gamers. It's the center place that you go. So if they have a, 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 a forum or a an area where you can showcase your Kickstarter games and things, that helps the consumer because we'll be able to see those and be notified of them much easier, as well as helping all of those people that are trying to make games and thus not you know, getting the attention that they need, so... Right, yeah. But that can't be green light, because that's devaluing green light, so... 
I don't know, we're at a kind of a weird positioning here where sometimes you'll see those games pop up and they'll be like, oh, it's Kickstarter, and it's like, I, 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 I want to vote this up, but it's it's still like devaluing green lights principle. Yeah. I know that it's, uh, they could have an entirely new section, just, uh, firm, okay, they, uh, games that get submitted to green light, and for, wow, wow, I'm, I'm bad. Basically, for all the games, if it gets submitted for, uh, all the games that are kickstarted, uh, end up in that section. They like, aren't greenlit or anything like that. Just letting people know. Yeah. Just, yeah. And Valve could do that very easily. Again, not needing much moderation. One person could do that for Valve. Yes, hundreds of titles are are submitted to greenlight a day. But one person could probably get through a hundred titles in a day. It's work. Yeah. Yeah. And I say this because whenever I was doing uh, that job where I was assessing ads, I had to do hundreds of quarries per hour. <laughs> so it's not exactly, you know, something that's super dramatic or anything crazy. It's something that's fairly easy and Valve could easily moderate. And they're just choosing not to. Just like they choose to kind of ignore Steam entirely as far as uh, policing it. So, that's fun. Hmm. Um, as far as it goes, but I guess that's about the only topic I had. And we... we I, I spent a lot of time on that. I think it worked pretty well. Yeah, too bad you didn't talk at all. I had me do on the heavy lifting. Yeah, Jeez. I know. Sorry, dude. I was going to throw in the Humble Weekly Bundle, but the Humble Weekly Bundle is not up yet, so... It doesn't help. This will probably be going up on today's, this will probably be going up on either Friday or Saturday. So. Alrighty. Yeah. And it'll be up before, this is mostly just a mini tasty podcast because the waiting queue has kind of been spotty lately. So this is kind of like a filler for that. And it's also to people who are new to my channel hey, we occasionally do stuff where we just sit down and talk about issues and, and things, and that's on the Waiting Queue podcast. So, I mean, head on over there and check some stuff out. Their Twitch page will probably be linked in the description, I assume, by me. Their YouTube page will probably be linked in the description, I assume, by me. Most Can't be likely. by Butkus because he has no access. He, he, he doesn't actually have an account. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. But we'll get that done. Um, anything interesting you want to talk about, Puckus? Uh, did, did, no. <laughs> Figured as uh, much. Figured as much. Um, Buckus and I have been playing a lot of Don't Starve together lately. That's as, true. And uh, I think, Relic, you mentioned that you were uh, planning on probably uh, increasing the length of each video? Yes, I was planning on increasing the length of each video because it's just, there, there's so much to it. And I feel like it's kind of not alright, really, to cut out the um, the the, sal the scavenging portions in favor of just showing you each uh, more interesting section because that's not the, that's not the Don't Starve experience. I feel like I'm devaluing the Don't Starve experience by taking away stuff that might be a little bit less interesting, but it is still interesting in favor of just, you know, time. So. Right. So that's what I've been planning on doing. But we've also been, but you know, we've been doing a lot together with that, and no one's really seen any of that yet, but we've been playing through it a lot. And we've got a lot of content from it, so you yeah. guys will uh, be seeing frickin', that. Frickin' deer clops. That guy. Fire. Look, look, that was deer clops' fault, probably. Yeah. Uh huh. Totally. Yep. One hundred percent. Speaking of don't starve together. Now, this is something that 
Cube has actually mentioned. Cube mentioned that um, on Don't Starve, there are certain like there are discrepancies between Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together. Whereas, uh, like the thermal stone doesn't degrade and don't starve, S- stuff like that. And right. I, w- I just want to get your opinion on this. Do you think that Clay Entertainment, at this point, is putting forth more of its time towards don't starve together, or do you just think that they made that choice, made choices like that deliberately in don't starve together? to make it harder for multiple people because you obviously can't have Don't Starve be impossible. Well, a bit of both, really. It's... A bit of both, really. Because, uh... You know, Don't Starve Together is kind of their newer project. So it makes sense that they would, uh... be putting forth a bit more time on it. But, uh... Also... Things are easier with more people. People can scavenge, people can cook, people can mine, people can cut down trees, and if they're all out of one base, they cut down the supply out in, uh, intake by a lot, so... Alright, I just wanted to see what you would, what you thought of that. I personally uh, sort of agree with that, actually. Um, I feel like that Clay Entertainment is putting forth a lot of their manpower towards Don't Starve Together because it's, you know, it is the cooperative version of Don't Starve and it's seemingly more um, active on Steam. Like, more people are playing it because it's it's more fun than the original Don't Starve in in a lot of people's opinions because they get to play with their friends. Yeah. So I feel like they are putting forth more of their effort towards that because of, you know, because of that like they're they're putting more manpower into it because it's the product that's getting more attention but i also feel like that they are making conscious decisions like making the thermostone degrade over time and not doing that in the original don't serve because i don't want it to be too hard so i do agree with you on those points yeah. we're on the same page ish we're always on the same page cool you know, <laughs> and as I, I mean, I wish we had more topics to talk about. I wish there was more stuff that we could talk about, but we really can't. Yeah, and all the time you gave us to prepare, we really should have been looking stuff like this up. Yeah, I gave us like literally fifty minutes, but that's okay because this can just be like a thirty-minute thing, and it's pretty much just me posing questions to you at this point and giving my own insight. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, something I definitely wanted to... Uh, I can't even remember. Uh, there was there's something Mention. important. Talk to me about... Use words on... Yeah, no. Speak with... Buckus and I are also going to be engaging in some projects in the future as well. We're going to be doing... Uh, probably recording some... L Sword and maybe a few other, uh, you know, MMO-ish games. Yeah. And as well as, um, this is about to, like me wrapping up now, I guess. Um, I'm yeah. also going to be recording Guild Wars Story Mode, and then the Guild Wars, uh, what is it? Guild Wars Living Story. And then I'm probably going to stop doing anything with Guild Wars, so... It'd be like, well, at least channel wise, done doing stuff with Guild Wars. And as far as the channel goes as well, uh, Buckus, this isn't actually on my channel. This is more of a thing for Drive Not Found. Um, we were mm. talking about doing more tournaments. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, well, for instance, uh, Hearthstone. That's just a little four-person tournament. That yeah, would, uh, that would be fun sometime. Yeah, we were thinking of using the basic decks because they don't give uh, advantages or disadvantages to anyone, since no one would really have any cards. Like, you wouldn't be able to choose what cards you're using. Really, it'd just be the basic cards. So, um, it'd make it the fairest. 
And Cross has mentioned that he wanted to go back and do another Pokemon Showdown tournament. So oh, that might... would be fun. Uh, last one, kind of. Well, I don't know about you guys. Well, you didn't care because you were out of it. But uh, after Twitch shut down, in right in the middle, no one else was. No one, even myself included, were really into it after that. Mm. Yeah, I was eliminated first round, so... <laughs> yep. <laughs> I gotta just of leave. Goku, Jesus. Uh, I gotta immediately leave, and then I was like, yep, I'm just... I'm done here. <laughs> 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 and I was able to then make uh, some funny videos out of that, so it was fun. But Cross has definitely said, you know, we should trade that again and not have it fail, hopefully. And hopefully that'll work out in the end. Um, as far as streaming goes, though, the reason that you only see Daglas streaming on Drive Not Found mostly and not Buckkiss anymore, because Buckkiss was doing the uh, Vampire the Masquerade, right? Yeah. That... It was, um, it just, the, no one really has any good internet connections anymore. <laughs> yeah, mine spontaneously blew up or something. So... We all are pretty much limited, except for Daglas. He's pretty much the only one you can stream now. <laughs> so, that's wonderful. Because otherwise I'd stream Don't Starve, rather than playing it through recording each part with Buckus. I'd, I would just stream it out. But Yeah, Cube, uh, Cube even mentioned that uh, you would probably be doing Payday a lot more if you could stream it, because then he wouldn't have to edit any episodes. You can just yeah. transfer them. Well, and it would be much easier to uh, to do. Um, what was it? The the what's the mission? Firestarter or something? The one where you cook a bunch of meth. Um, oh, uh, cook off. The cook off marathon. It'd be it'd be much easier to do that in stream yeah. rather than recording because you know pausing and all that and stuff and how big the files would be from going on for so long. So. Really? Yeah, yeah. Q probably cleared out his uh, hard drive space a lot when he finally did that. Yeah, probably. I mean, that was, that was a lot of time that we put in that, I think, an hour and a half? And an hour That's and a half right. of payday is a pretty big file. So, that's about it. I don't think we have much more to talk about, really. Um... As far as what's going up on my channel, this is a waiting queue thing. <laughs> as far as what's going up on my channel, uh, you can expect mostly the same. I'm focusing on where the human tanks alter, but I'm experimenting with a couple of other ga other games, um, and I'm uh, I'm trying. I'm still trying to get Toho out eventually. That'll be there sometime. As far as, uh, as far as my channel, it's pretty shit. My channel has nothing good on it. Don't subscribe. <laughs> Even though that this is the only place you're listening. lying. Subscribe so you can see more videos of me. Yeah. Yeah, because he's never going to record anything. You know you could record stuff. Yeah, I could. I'd need to invest some into a hard drive space, but... Eh, uh, you can make do. How much hard drive space do you have right now? Uh, let, let me think here. I think if I cleared out some some games that I don't really play, I could probably get about 50,000. Or, ah, uh, that's dumb. What am I even saying? Hang on, half a gigabyte. Wait, that's wrong. Oh my god. Half Did a terabyte? Yes! So 500 gigabytes. Yes. You realize that's more than what most people are even working with. I usually only work with 200 gigabytes. Wait, 500 gigabytes? That's wrong. Give, give, give me a second here. Oh my goodness, just check your hard drive. How big is it? God damn. How I much space know, used think... out of Okay, big... okay, 100 gigabytes. Okay, so you would have 50 gigabytes to work with. Yes. So your hard drive is actually pretty small. 
yes. Mm. I would have to uh, get another drive so that I could have room. Yeah, I would just get. I'm just get next turn. I think your next turn terabyte only costs like thirty bucks nowadays. Uh, so uh, next turn like five hundred wouldn't be much at all. I don't think. So what would you say the odds are of you cutting out some of the, you know, more bad fumbles with my words I've had this time? Oh, I'm just gonna leave those in. Oh, good. Yep. I'm not taking those out. I'm taking the only thing I'm taking out is the uh, long pause, <laughs> long drawn out pause. That's getting taken out. Everything else is staying in. And if you want to see more kind of sit downish talkish things like this, um, although I don't know if in the background there's just going to be a static image or if in the background it will be of like recorded video games or something. I don't know. But the waiting queue podcast happens every usually happens on Monday at 5 p.m. So, of every week. So, definitely go check that out. It has a YouTube page where you can check out the older ones. I will have that linked like I mentioned previously. And, yeah. Thanks for watching. Remember to... Shut up. Comment and sub okay. <laughs> I knew exactly what you were going to do. That's because we joke about it constantly. It is. It's the best joke ever. Guys, remember to like, favorite, subscribe, and share on Twitter. This to all of your friends. Remember to tweet on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> oh, goodness. No, but well, that's it for us. We don't have or much to talk about. Or is it tweet on Twitter? Hmm. Such an idiot. <laughs> Thank you. I try. We uh, if we continue doing this, we'll probably have actual, you know, stuff next time. Yeah, but that's unlikely. Yeah, probably unlikely. Or we'll just talk about wrestling. Who knows? Oh yeah, wrestling, wrestling Tekken. We have tons. We have tons of stuff. Just wrestling and Tekken. That's all we need. <laughs> we could go days on that. Uh, Colt Cabana, look out! We're taking over. <laughs> This sucks.